these are impressive cliffs. It is day two and I'm all packed up to go. Got a late start. Didn't really get out of bed until nine o'clock. It's just past 10 and I'm really wishing I got up a little earlier because as I started breaking down camp, it drizzled and a lot of my stuff got a little wet. Not really drizzling anymore, but the forecast calls for clouds and off and on rain all day. So I might cut this height short, but for now, I have a rough plan. This is the Panther Town map uh, by Bert Cornegay. This is the best map you can buy for the area. Really detailed, one in 24,000. So I parked at Cold Mountain Gap yesterday and I took the Panther Town Valley Trail down to Schoolhouse Falls. From there, I went over to Little Green Mountain and then the Little Green, Little Green Trail south to the Max Gap Trail. Saw Granny Burl Falls, then went up to the Panther Town Valley Trail again. Took the Powerline Road Trail and then did the Bushwhack down to Warden's Falls. And then I took the Devil's Elbow Trail and my campsite is basically right here at the river crossing at Riding Ford Falls. When I dropped my pack, I went north towards Elbow Falls and Red Butt Falls. So for today, my plan is to take the Riding Ford Trail over to Black Rock Mountain and then drop into Salt Rock Gap, maybe see Wilderness Falls, definitely Frolic Town Falls and the Shelter and take the Great Wall Trail up to Big Green Mountain, then connect again with the Max Gap Trail and check out Greenland Creek Falls before finishing up at the trailhead. This is Riding Ford, right beside my campsite. The Riding Ford Trail crosses right here. And I believe the series of cascades immediately downstream is Riding Ford Falls. So I'm not gonna go check it out. I don't think I'm missing much. Time to move, it's drizzling again. I'm on the Overlook Trail ascending Black Rock Mountain. And this seems to be the Overlook section on the map, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna see anything today. These clouds are thick, very misty, uh, but maybe the waterfalls will look pretty good in this type of weather. This section is uh, much more open. This seems very precarious. Huge exposure here. If you slip and tumble, you're dropping hundreds of feet. This is Wilderness Falls on a tributary of Frolictown Creek. And uh, the sheer size of it, especially the rock walls, definitely surprised me. Uh, I think it's about 70 feet high. And it's a really impressive area. Unfortunately, there's a lot of deadfall and rhododendrons surrounding the creek. And my only way to get a view without these branches in the way is to get my feet wet again and I really don't feel like doing that right now. This will have to do. Still is pretty cool. Of the trails I've been on so far this weekend, the Wilderness Trail has the most remote feeling and definitely feels a lot different because 
it goes through a pretty dense rhododendron jungle for almost the entire uh, length of the hike so far. I'm almost to the end and uh, next stop is Frolic Town Falls. This was very convenient to reach. This is literally right below the junction of the Wilderness Trail and the Deep Gap Trail. And it's a very short scramble path to the base. This is Frolic Town Falls, a quaint little waterfall, about 12, 14 feet high. I can't really get a straight on shot unless I get in the water. So I'm not gonna do that. This will suffice. This is the backpacking shelter on the Great Wall Trail. And it's very big. That looks like it can fit a lot of people. And plus, it is a huge flat area that can fit a lot of tents. If you think it's gonna rain, this would be a good place to stay. I'm currently heading east on the Great Wall Trail. After that trail shelter, it becomes a hikers only path. And uh, this is supposed to be a spectacular trail in the winter. It uh, follows the upper Panthertown Creek Valley towards its headwaters, and it passes beneath the Great Wall, which is the south face of Big Green Mountain with a enormous 300 to 400 foot cliffs. But since uh, it is early spring and with this overcast weather, I'm not sure I'll be able to see much of the Great Wall. But I decided to uh, continue with my original route. It was drizzling a little bit harder a couple hours ago and I thought I might have to cut the hike short and uh, try to get to the parking area as quickly as possible. But for the last hour, it uh, has been pretty nice. It's less humid, less drizzling, and uh, I'm gonna continue on to the Big Green Trail. I might go up to the top of Big Green Mountain and uh, I'm definitely gonna stop by Greenland Creek Falls before finishing up. I'm actually passing beneath the Great Wall right now, and I can see some of it. It looks really awesome. Here are some really nice campsites. And uh, you can definitely see most of the cliffs. They are really big. I wonder if these trails go all the way to the base. Don't know if I have time to check them out. You guys know me. How could I not check this out? This is actually really close to the campsite. And <laughs> it's basically just dirt, 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 dirt. And then, <laughs> wow. These are impressive cliffs.
I'm almost at the end of the Great Wall Trail. I just thought this was cool. Uh, they carved steps right into the rock. At a overlook on Big Green Mountain. Let's go check it out. Another precarious overlook in Panther Town Valley. This is about as far as I'm willing to go. You can see some of the uh, rock faces on Goldstone Ridge across the Panther Town Creek Valley. And uh, down there you can see, uh, you might be able to see Panther Town Creek. This overlook is not actually at the end of the Big Green Trail. So I'm going to get back to the main trail and keep going a little bit further. This is awesome. The official Big Green Trail ends at the tip of the mountain and a flagged manway continues down to this little spot. I'm basically at the edge of the Great Wall, almost directly above the campsite where I was at the base of the Great Wall. It's probably, I think it's right down there, judging by the map. This is a pretty incredible spot, although I'm not sure how far I want to venture out. This uh, drainage here is the Frolictown Creek. And then you can see a house up there that's beyond the boundary of Nantahila National Forest. This is Greenland Creek Falls. My last stop of the day, a short out and back from the Max Gap Trail, and then I'm gonna return to the parking lot. This is a really impressive waterfall. Really cool double drop. Um, I think it's about 50 to 60 feet high. And there's actually two more waterfalls upstream Halfway Falls and Carlton's Falls, but the trail, the official trail ends here, and it's a uh, manway to those two, and I don't think I have time or energy to do that. It started to drizzle a little bit more. I'll settle for this. Pretty cool. I'm less than a half mile from Cold Mountain Gap, finishing up the weekend on the Max Gap Trail. It's almost 3.30, which means I've been hiking roughly five hours today. Combined with yesterday, I hiked about 10 and a half hours and I covered just over 20 miles. So, Averaging two miles per hour backpacking is pretty good time. But as I said, the trails in Panther Town Valley are mostly pretty easy. You should be able to cover about two miles an hour with a full backpack and uh, probably two and a half miles an hour with the day pack. I got to see three waterfalls today, nine waterfalls total. And I missed out on four waterfalls on Greenland Creek. I just uh, didn't have the energy and uh, it's drizzling pretty heavily right now. And I don't want to get caught in a sudden downpour. So it's good that I'm finishing mid afternoon so I can get home at a reasonable time. This is a great, area for beginning backpacking because of the moderate and easy trails, tons of huge campsites, and uh, lots of water sources. So I highly recommend checking it out, either as a day hike 
for a weekend. This is gonna be a long video. Maybe I'll break it up into two. Either way, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.